around the bend to the right is the way of the river. That's where we're going. It starts on that bridge. It's where it starts to move on the uh, And the only way through the lake is off the left is through the lock. So yeah, you'll see like, you know, the lock we go. It's, it's gates yeah, you'll on the lock. Like, the boat like, yeah, yeah. controls water so, 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 The lake is higher than the river. See the boats on the left, they're waiting to get in the water. The lake is five feet higher than the river, which means that the lake flows into the river. What? Shouldn't a river flow into the lake? Yes. This river used to flow into the lake. It doesn't anymore. This river has been reversed in the year 1900. This river flew backwards. In the late 1800s, this river wasn't like this. A pleasant place to be. This river was an industrial dump and sewer for the city of Chicago, and it flowed out the lake. We were drinking water is taken. So in the late 1800s, Chicagoans are dying by the thousands every year of getting communicable disease from the city water and drugs in Chicago places. Stop dumping. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not a concept in the 1800s. It's not an option on the table, stop the dumping the river. That took until the 60s. Instead, Chicago just plays God with Mother Nature and engineers a river reversal. Chicago reversed this river by digging a canal deeper than the river. It took 11 years and they removed more earth than the Panama Canal. When that canal was open, hi, it pulled the river backwards immediately, which saved our drinking water and saved our lives. Yay! But it sent our wastewater somewhere else, down the Mississippi. Boom. It was a matter of life and death for Chicago. This is the only river in the world that runs backwards, to which I say, good. <laughs> but that's where we are. Welcome now to the main branch. Start a little more like a river, isn't it? She hammers out, she's got her straight arm. And now, let's start talking about architecture. To the left, shield your eyes if you have to. Chicago's brand new third tallest skyscraper. Let's start with something brand new. This is the third tallest building in the city, but it is the tallest building in the world designed by a woman architect. I have a picture. Can we get to start with this building, you guys? I know, right? This is the St. Regis. It's a hotel and residential building. You can see the balconies up and down the side of it. That's how you can tell it's residential. Soon it'll block the sun. Uh, and this is by Jeannie Gang, studio game architect. She runs her own firm right here in Chicago. She's in Chicago. And this building is a great example of skyscrapers today. Blue glass, acts like a mirror, like heat on the building. It's energy efficient. So like what makes this unique, the gentle waving shape throws shadows on itself, looks like flowing water, frozen in motion as a skyscraper. Super cool. And you know what? The building is located on the flowing water of the river. It's no coincidence. A building that looks like flowing water built on flowing water. As I like to say, the building is to the river. This is a site-specific design. It is called contextualism. It's a whole thing in architecture. You can see many examples of buildings that make reference to their surroundings. They all look different, but they're also Now, children, as again, at the very top, the widest part of the top segment, two and two floors. That's what the end of floors. Those are blow through floors. They are exactly the same. They're in the blow through floors, nothing passes. No glass, just the elevator floor going up to the center. Serving the top levels, which are kind of eighteen and a half million dollar condo. If you buy yourself an eighteen and a half million dollar condo, you want to be seasick in the wind all the time. Yeah, no. That's what the blow through floors are about. They're there to reduce sway, increase comfort, top of building. But let's be real, they're there to maintain real estate value. They're the first blow through floors in the city of Chicago. The blow through floors are as you can see around the world. The standard on skyscraper structure. Next, to the left, in the back row behind the triangle and box, the funny wavy balconies of Aqua from 2009. Those are real balconies. It's a hotel and residential building. And that is by Jeannie Gang. Same woman architect. This is the first building that she built on the river, and it made her famous. She won prestigious awards for it. It's now 13 years later, and she's at the top of her game. She just built a super tall skyscraper, and she's currently building O'Hare Airport. 
multi-billion dollar airport expansion contract she won last summer. I used to say she was the future of Chicago architecture. Let's be real, she's the present of Chicago architecture. She's the hot shop in Chicago right now. Uh, she's born in Illinois. She's an old Chicago architecture student. She's a real Chicago architect. And it is such a privilege to be able to talk about her on the tour, especially right at the beginning. So, she, by the way, she is the only woman architect on the tour. All right, ahead on the right, the white building with the clock tower. Our first historic building, our first office building. This is the Wrigley Building from 1921, built to be the Wrigley Corporate Headquarters, as in Wrigley Chewing Gum and Wrigley Beer. Same Wrigley. They're not in there. But it's still called the Wrigley Building, it's still an office building. But it's designed to look like the Cathedral of Sevilla in Spain. Okay, so we recognize that. Awesome. So this building is American office building. Smell when these were built. 
and that's why they were built far away from the water. You wouldn't have to smell the river from your balcony. Uh, the building was also built before people wanted to live in 